And hello humans, uh, this is Great Elan, and you've reached Great Elan Games here. Uh, today we're going to be continuing on with the Book of Living Magic. And uh, this, again, this is going to be our Flash of the Week uh, game, so it's going to be a little bit longer than what I anticipated. I forgot how involved it was, but what we're going to try to do here is get through two of these sections. Um, let's, uh, the, we'll wait on the Force of Eyewall, since that seems to be where the main action is happening and we'll go for this half with where there's the wood of the monster beast and then pool of tranquility since those seem to be mentioned most and we seem to have a better chance of surviving it's a red black tree yeah guys you have any problem with that at night fairies dance on these mushrooms these mushrooms may look delicious but they're not the berries of the batkin bush can only be removed with the right kind of shtick <laughs> Okay, so we can go left or right. Let's go left. There's some gloop here, but you don't know how to pick it up. It clearly requires a special ability. You should ask an expert about that. Small, slightly smelly wall. The entrance to the temple of gloop is walled up. A little bit of wall. Strange. Avast, human lass. Talk to Arg the parrot. Arg. Arr, I lived on the wild seas for many years and applied me trade in many of the finest captains. But now I live here in these ear woods. There'll be some people looking for me. And then they'll suspect I'm here. Arr, terrible monster beast. I it be a mighty beast of the forest. I've heard it be more dangerous than scurvy and cannibals on the same ship. God, it would be taken a martyr to defeat it. It shivers me timbers just to think about it. The sea. Aye, there be nothing like the sea. Tis freedom, beauty, and terror all in one. I know deep in my pirate heart I'll see it again. Arr! Arr, indeed. Evil Dr. McSelfish. Ah, Cursed that son of a biscuit eater. May his land loving corpse feed the fish. Build, shuck, and blaggard. Entrance. One day it was open, the next was all bricked up. Well, that seems to be a concise summary of what happened here. There's a lot of mushrooms in these woods. Almost, you know, as if it belongs there. The pair appears to be using a golden plate from the court of La Comata Zin as its nest. Hey, whatever works. Everyone deserves a little bit of luxury, right? Okay. This tree is profoundly sinister. It wants a colony of termites for refix. Oh, yep, it's terrifying. It's too dark! You can't go in there without a light source. You're likely to be in eaten by a Gru. <gasps> oh, no! Okay, so we've done all we can in the mountain of uh, Wood of the Wonder Beast. Oh, we can skip it and just go straight to the Pool of Tranquility. And it was carved into the rock in an ancient script. It's Inanna? Irana? Something like that. Whoever she was, you are thankful for the beauty she left behind. On closer inspection, this is not a flower, but a bit of unicorn poo. It does smell flowers, though. The flower smiles at you. Aww. Two mushrooms of the species Rusula sardina. They taste of poisonous sardines and are not recommended. You fill your bottle with water for the fabulous screech. Awesome. Okay, let's go and look at this Pegasus nest. The nest of the majestic Pegasus. Hello, young one. Talking to Pegasus. Name. My name is Wind and Feather. Galloping hooves and beating wings. I am the clouds. I am the storm. Mountains of Oddness. They are great and ancient, but not eternal. The world always changes and reshapes itself. Feather. A feather? Since you ask not for yourself, but to help another, I will help you. Here, take this feather and help the furry one. Helping Primus. Tell your friend I will help him. He shall see the world as he has not seen it before and discover a portion of eternity. This, I promise. Oh, well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Storm. You're very generous there. A bit of magical grass next to some magical stones. The presence of the Pegasus imbues everything around its nest with magic. Ah, cool. Cutie, cute, 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 cute. This nest looks rather a lot like a basket. It does, and you know what? We're just, we're just not gonna brain it up. That's what I think would be best. Forest of Eyeballs. I missed the description. The terrifying forest of eyeballs, home of strange magics. It's eyeing you. The side just had some pie. A tired eyeball. It came here yesterday on an overnight flight from Imbrigg. 
And idle eye while idly idling in the sun. I just love that sentence. This eye is high. This eye. The eye does not reply. This eye will knows the secret of death. This eye has seen the future. It would weep if it could. Okay. And this will be another area where you'll want to explore more when you're playing on your own here. Because every eyeball has a description. Another baby eyeball. It appears to be drooling a little. That was worth the clicking. Uh, a terrifying demonic eyeball. Oh, no. It's an eyeball, apparently. A little girl, come over here. I have a trade to propose. <laughs> Baba Yaga. I'm Baba Yaga, the witch. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of me. <laughs> but they always get the stories wrong. Ridiculous stories. House on chicken legs. Flies around in a pedestal. Pa, clicking nonsense, all of it. <laughs> Lake of blood. Nothing around here is what it seems. <laughs> Witchcraft. Witchcraft is not for you, little girl. There is other magic in your future. I can see it. <laughs> Forest of eyeballs. It's nice and sinister. The eyeballs see more than you think. <laughs> Book of living magic. You'll find it in the Temple of Gloop. <laughs> Goodness, we're a chuckly one. Trade. Yes, little girl, the trade. I will let you go to the Lake of Blood without eating your flesh and spitting out your bones. If you go on a quest for me. <laughs> I'm in the mood for banana gloop ice cream. I don't have the ingredients. So you must get them for me. <laughs> you know the recipe? It requires pickled human eyeballs, gloop, and of course banana. <laughs> Bring me these ingredients and I shall let you pass. Okay, so we need the gloop, a banana, which we get from that one dude, the monkey, and pickled human eyeballs, which maybe we get from the carrots? Ooh, that looks like it might be a place that we go to later. So right now we need to go to Oddness Standing. Because we have the fabulous screeches. Uh, we have the feather for him, so let's do this. I can do a better monkey impression process. Come on. No, not that. Okay, we'll not worry about it. Feather. Arrgh, is it out? Yeah, oh yes, here it is. Thank you so much. You've helped me complete my experiment and resolve an unpleasant situation. Here, take this marble as a reminder of your contribution to the exploration of new philosophical spaces. No, don't worry, I've got more somewhere. Ickbert Appledoon. Yes, I'm Dutch. Stall. If you ever need anything, just ask me. I've got fruits and vegetables from all over the land to dream, including the most delicious bananas. Bananas are good for the mind. They always help me come up with new ideas. Come to think of it, if I took a banana and... Mmm. See a vast array of possibilities unfolding before me. Understanding. Understanding is the perfect home for a thinker like myself. It's beautiful, it's quiet, and yet not yet disconnected uh, from the world at large. Here I can pursue all my philosophical experiments until I finally arrive at greater truths. Evil Dr. McSelfish. An evil creature! His experiments are designed not for the attainment of philosophical wisdom, but to impose his will on others. Do you know that he once built a cage out of 10,000 moose bones? I mean, the idea itself is not without merit, but couldn't he have asked the moose first? In the end, the experiment only served to demonstrate his power, not to explore the possibilities of moose bone cage building. Philosopher. I am a creature of thought, a seeker on the path to knowledge. I follow in the tradition of Adrian Korbach and Baruch Spinoza, Balthazar Becker, and Behard Harsinen. Inspired to my wisdom and understanding, and willing to go to great lengths to achieve my goals. Banana. A banana? But of course, here you go. Banana is the first step to philosophy. Bye! Lemons are completely free of proximal demonstratives. Not all lemons, just. Hilarious. Okay. Fabulous screech. Ah, uh, wild human. I could use your services. Let's speak about those. Well done, little human. Here, as a reward, I present you with a traditional katsui nom. Pickled human eyeballs. No, don't worry. These are free-range eyeballs. Trust me, human. They're simply delicious. Okay. Yes, I require a term you have. Purr, purr, purr. Well done, human. I may require more tummy rubs later. I love the fabulous screech. And I thought we would get the pickled eyeballs from him. It just seemed right, you know. Let's talk about Gloop. Hello. What can I, I know I know it's sort of like... Mm -hmm. Hello. What can, what can I do for you? 
There we go. Ah, uh, you must learn how to pick up gloop. I can teach you this scale. But first, you must become an honorary mutant priest. To achieve this, you must go to the forest of eyeballs and find a demon eyeball. Talk to it and learn its story, then return to me. Bye. I, and we know exactly where that is. We have seen it. Boom. Boom. Bada boom. There we go. Greetings, mortal. Demon eyeball. I was not always as you see me now. A long time ago I was a demon, a mighty creature of thought and will. Yet my thought and will were geared only towards power and dominance, and my hands knew only destruction and hatred. I raged through the world, leaving only pain and loss in my wake. I sent children to war and consigned the old to poverty. I hunted down myths and prisoned the truth. One day I came across the witch, Baba Yaga, and sought to destroy her. She seemed weak and ridiculous to me, a pathetic old creature, but her power was unexpected. She transformed me into my present shape, rooted to the ground, and able only to watch the world. I railed against my punishment for centuries, trying with all my might to break the spell. How could I, a great demon, be brought so low by an old and feeble witch? But the spell could not be broken, for Baba Yaga is older and more powerful than I knew. Then one day I looked at the stars. They were so beautiful, and yet I had never looked up to see them before. I was transfixed. When the stars faded and the morning came, I almost cried, but then I saw the sun and the clouds. The world was glorious, and I had never known. My anger faded as my understanding grew. I came to realize my transformation was a blessing, not a punishment. So I watched the clouds, and the birds, and the sun, and the stars, and the bats, and the moon, and on some days the great Pegasus, and I am content. Well, that was a great story to know. That was very... Very happy, happening. I don't know. Very happy. I liked that. Okay. Gloop. Well done. Well done. You have sought out knowledge and perhaps found a little wisdom. You are now an honorary mutant priestess and may pick up the gloop wherever you find it. Temple of Gloop. Just a question. The entrance of the temple has been walled up. This can only be the work of do evil old Dr. McSelfish. Totally changed the voice there. Sorry. Okay, so now we go... Where's the gloop? It's over here. It's over here. Yes, over here. Awesome. Picked up the gloop. With the skills taught you to you by Shabbat, the mutant priest, you pick up the gloop. Yes, we did. What was to the right again? Ah, the place where it's too dark to enter. So now we can have the ice creamy stuff and get past here, which is exciting. Ah, the little girl. <laughs> Demon eyeball, actually. Ah, him. Maybe I'll turn back one of these days. <laughs> Trade. You've done it. <laughs> Thank you, little girl. The road is free. May you find what you seek. <laughs> I take this present with you, my old broomstick. It doesn't fly anymore, but you might find a use for it. <laughs> okay, bye. Greetings, boatman. Talking to mysterious boatman. Talk. I am... Um, the boatman. I guard the lake. I take some across, and others not. Lake of Blood. It is ancient, as am I. Baba Yaga. She is a witch. She knows many things. Crossing the lake. Not all are allowed to cross. You will be, if you help me. I have stood by this lake so many centuries. Many fear the Lake of Blood, but they do not know. The lake is not of blood of ketchup and I I have so, uh, stood so many years and I've never had fries so much ketchup and not a single fry help me young traveler I beg you help me and I will take you across this lake uh, yeah I just love the logic too this is the boatman's pet eyeball this eyeball is looking at your hair this eyeball can sense storms as they approach all cool stuff okay so it's a straightforward path here here. So now, okay. Pegasus Nest, Pool of Trend. Well, yeah, I don't think there's. The water's refreshing and yet calming. You feel centered and at peace. Hmm. So let's go back and uh, look here. Hmm. Okay. It's not open. We need a lamp. Let's look here. Problems. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, no. 
It's the same. It's the same thing. Okay. Well, we'll continue to just click on a few things here. Oh, right. We need to talk to Prime. Miss. What? Pegasus. And so it came to pass that a one-legged robot was seen riding a Pegasus amongst the clouds above the mountain of Odinus, or mountains of Odinus. Primus was filled with joy at the beauty he saw, and he never forgot that day. Aww. Even when they finally caught up with him, as they always do, and reshaped him in their image, they found that there was one bit they could never take away from him. No matter what they did, he would always remember the beauty and the freedom of flying through the clouds. And that's where it becomes oddly tragic, because he's very good at that turn in, that turn in the stories. Torch. Hello, how are you? I'd like to give you this electric torch. I wish I had more to give you, even if I can't give you as much as you gave me. But this is the best I can do. I hope it will be useful to you. It is. Look, eh, I'm not so good with the talking. I just want to say thank you. I didn't think I'd ever get to experience something like that. It was more beautiful than I could have imagined. So, thank you. Aw, bye. Let's go. Let's go with a torch. Let's go with the torch and let's go through this space. Cave of the Monster Beast. Monster Beast. The Monster Beast is afraid of you. Aw, sweet. The Monster Beast is scared of you. Maybe you could find it something to eat? Hmm. Uh, but what does a Monster Beast eat? You better ask someone about that first. Okay, so what do you eat? We need to ask someone about that. I mean, they did just tell us. Okay. Who would know? Baba Yaga? Maybe. Maybe she would know. Maybe not. Ooh, Terrible Monster Beast. Maybe. The Terrible Monster Beast of Unvanquishable Doom. Oh, sorry. is as powerful as they say. But don't worry. Being a creature of true horror, it only eats that which is horrible. <laughs> okay, so that wasn't really specific here. Um... And he needs fries, so we need fries and something that's actually horrible. Uh, do you know anything? No, you won't know anything, but that was so sweet what you did for Primus. Okay, pool of tranquility, no. Nope, okay, so it is time to go back to Odinus Standing, see what the standings are here. Uh, Basil, Ministry, Primus. Primus is much happier now, even though he still doesn't talk much. What you've done for him is extraordinary. Right, a Pegasus. What an idea. Let's see, the, okay, yep. So, no drinks here, nothing here that can assist. Uh, problem with the Temple of Gloop, bottle, uh, maybe the Temple of Gloop? Nope, okay. Let's just try and get in the temple get that book. But what, what an adventure. Anything different here? No. Bye. Okay. Oh, maybe we need a stick. Hey, how are you? What's in my stick collection? Trade? Maybe we can trade the... Wow, a size 81 crate, sir. Where did you get that? Oh, this is so cool. Here, I'll trade you your magic stick for this beautiful, totally unused, hairy food, Glockus and elm stick, size 79. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Okay, I think that was what we were supposed to do to get food for the wood beast. Do you have any problems? You have problems. Uh, okay, so it's just just the typical, typical, oh, evil Dr. McShelfish. Uh, selfish. Selfish, which is a pun, of course. Um... Maybe require services. Ah, more tummy rubs. Okay. So there's that. There's that. I think we take this to uh, the Wood of the Monster Beast. Okay. Marble of Horror. Oh, okay. We have a marble. I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, that would be horror. The Monster Beast eats this delicious treat. It likes you very much. Aw, that's sweet. Monster Beast. Brr. The Monster Beast loves you. Aw. 
Aw, well, bye. You're very nice and sweet, and I'm not sure why we did that. The monster beast is happy to see you. Aww. Okay. Well, you're cute, and I'm happy to see you too. Yeah. Maybe we can take. No, we can't take the stick and hit that. We need fries somehow. Maybe this works as a fry. Great greetings. Hmm, okay, so we don't need the stick right now. We have this. A torch. Yeah, we use that to go and get the monster beast. The monster beastie. Okay. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Okay, let's think. Thought we might be able to get fries here. Okay, so neither of those two can help now. Is Bob the spider open? Probably never, but that's okay. So we got the stick. We got the fries. Oh, of course. Fries? I don't have fries, but I have potatoes. And under the correct circumstances, potatoes can be transformed into fries. Here you go. Good luck. Bye. Uh, kitchen where? Okay, so we don't need kitchenware to continue. Let's just see if we can go and take the potatoes to him. Crossing the lake, talk. Nope. Okay, so... Do we see a fire somewhere? I did not. Ah, I thought it might be this. Make fries. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Moss Reese turns your potato into fries using its sharp teeth and its belly full of boiling oil. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Okay, here we go. Crossing the lake now. And so the boatman took Ravenlocks across the Lake of Blood, which should more properly have been called the Lake of Ketchup, and together they had the most delicious fries anyone has ever had. Thus Ravenlocks reached the lair on the other shore, and the boatman was very happy. Okay, cool. Um, and, uh, look, oh, you pressed the button using the stick you got from Ingrass. The grill opens! And so Ravenlocks descended the stairs to the lair of the villain, who had not who had terrified the mountains of oddness, only to find that things were not entirely as they seemed, for this was not, clearly not, evil, Dr. Mix, selfish. What? Could it be true that all the fear had been for nothing? That the problems everyone was worried about were just a misunderstanding? But if this was not Dr. Mix, selfish, who had walled up the entrance to the Temple of Gloop? It was time to find out. Let's go, guys. Why, hello there! Misunderstanding, because this is the good Dr. Mix, selfish. Hello there, my name is Dr. McShellfish. Pleased to meet you. What? Everyone thinks this is the lair of d evil Dr. McShellfish? No, dear. Or, oh dear, no wonder no one came by to visit me. I was wondering, you know. I always heard that the people of the Mountains of Oddness were so friendly. That's why I came here, as a matter of fact. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Such misunderstanding. And I was so busy with my work that I forgot to drop by the village and introduce myself. Oh, what a dreadful situation. I'm so glad you decided to visit me. The misunderstanding might have caused some very real problems. Dr. McSelfish. I've never met him, though I've heard many stories about the frightful things he's done. I hear he's teaching evil snobbery at Yale now. <laughs> Temple entrance. No, I didn't walk the entrance. Of course not. Have you considered the possibility of wall mushrooms? They sprout overnight and look remarkably like the real thing. A very peculiar species. Oh, I didn't consider that. But thank you. A most lobstrous carpet. Upsetting the balance of this delicate experiment will make everything in the vicinity smell like fish. Then let's not do it. A bottle of coagulated ink syrup. This bottle contains blue radio waves. A bottle of marvelous macro mo macromolecular mayonnaise. It smells lightly of alliteration. <laughs> yes, only lightly though. So, surprise! What a twist! 
That wasn't evil. What? Who knew? Uh, it's walled up, so how do we... How do we get by it? Probably talk to the mutant priest. Gloop, Shabbat, Temple Gloop. Um... Wall mushrooms? Yes, I believe I've read about these somewhere. Perhaps in the Urk Fork Drops Manitarian Book of Fungi. We'll have to see about transplanting them to a new location. Okay, bye! Um, maybe that was all it took? Maybe? No. Entrance. Okay, so we need to transplant them. Who could transplant? So we've done. Maybe you could? I don't know. No. So you need to get to the temple? Well, certainly. There's an underground river that goes there directly from my home. I can take you as soon as you're ready. Yeah. Boom. And so good Dr. McShellfish, who was not a villain after all, took Ravenlocks to the Temple of Gloop in his lobster mobile. Raven smiled as they rushed down the underground river, and she knew that the Book of Living Magic was very close now. Yeah, it is. Welcome to the Temple of Gloop, Narm. I am Narm, the mutant priest. Can I lend you a hand? I've got three. Hee <laughs> hee. Sorry, can't help it. Entrance. Yes, the entrance to our temple has been sealed by a wall mushroom. We're up in arms about it. Hee <laughs> hee. Get it? This person's as bad as me about puns. Temple of Gloop. The Temple of Gloop is where we dedicate ourselves to the pursuit of wisdom and the accumulation of gloop. As far as I'm concerned, it's hands down awesome. Hmm, no, that's not a very good joke. I just wanted to say something about armadillos, our armchairs, but I just couldn't find a way of fitting it in. I understand the pain. I'm actually writing a dissertation on the subject of limb-related humor. It's called Disarmingly Charming, Limb-Related Extremities and the Armaments of Wit. I know it sounds like it's quite a controversial subject, but it's actually quite harmless. Get it? Armless? Harmless? Oh well. Father Glark didn't get it either, but he has 11 eight legs and no arms, so I guess that's to be expected. Dr. McShellfish. Dr. McShellfish has offered to help us get supplies until that wall mushroom can be removed without harming it. He's really nice. Book of Living Magic. The Book of Living Magic? Yes, it's in the library, and of course you can see it. But before you do, could you do me a small favor while we go get the book from the library? Could you nip on over to Odin's Stain and deliver a message? Great, thanks. Tell Stanford Jim Bottom that Schlurp the Mutant Priestess says next Friday at noon. That's it. <laughs> Bye. And we all know that that's a relationship that's being formed. Message. Oh, hello there. She, she will see me again? Really? Really? Ah, oh, this is the best news I've heard all week, all week, all year. It must seem odd to you, perhaps even crude, but love, love is precious and beautiful and wild and stranger than anything you've ever seen. Sometimes it makes you crazy and sometimes it gets you stuck in a bottle, but believe me, it's worth it. Remember that and thank you for bringing me this message. Mm -hmm. We're always happy to do that for you. Uh, temple of Gloop. Back. Welcome to the Temple of Gloop. Okay. Book of Living Magic. A bell rained forth somewhere in the Temple of Gloop, and the mutant priest brought forth the Book of Living Magic. Thus Raven Locksmith, she of the brilliant mind and the unfortunate name, came to the end of her quest. What great secrets might the book contain? How would it change her life? Her mind tingled with anticipation. The Book of Living Magic opened, and she began to read. Her mind was filled with joy at what she found inside the book, for this was not a dreary book of power, or of sinister secrets. It was a book of that magic which changes and builds, that magic which unfolds through days and years and centuries and touches every life. It was a book of history. But this was no ordinary history book, if any such book may be called ordinary. For reading the Book of Living Magic but the stories that contain them there in alive, and for a brief moment weighed one part of them. And so, in reading, Raven lived a hundred stories, as you are living her story right now. She learned of the distant past, and how it affects us today. She learned of the sacrifices made by the billions who came before us, and of how the world has changed. She learned of love, and death, of war, and peace, and revolution. She saw the tides of history before her, and herself as part of that greatest of all adventures. And for the first time, she felt free.
The understanding that came to her that day changed her life, and Raven Locksmith became one of the most famous historians of the lands of dream. She traveled the world with her friend, Pravatika the Unhefted, and all that she learned she set down in her brilliant books. She even traveled back to the town of Dole, where her parents still lived, and though it was still a dreadful place, she now saw that it, too, had a history. From that day on, the memories of her childhood were never quite so painful again. But that's another story, and we have almost reached the end of this one. Soon, it will be time to close the book and return to your world. As you go, take with you the memories of Oddness Standing and its beautiful mountains of the Pegasus, and the Monster Beast, and the Bowman, and Dr. McShellfish. And always remember that you, too, are a part of the living magic. The end. Okay. And then we have the, all the links here at the end. I'll put them in the description here. Um, both parts. Uh, actually, it was only two parts, which I'm happy about because I was not anticipating it to even be two parts. I was worried it would turn into five. Uh, but, yeah. I, lo I just love his writing style. Uh, it's... I just love the graphics by Verena Karatz, even though they probably don't appreciate me butchering their name, but sorry. Uh, I do appreciate, I wanted to just give a shout out to uh, Jonas uh, Karatz, uh, because I had emailed him about the fabulous Screech and the Book of Living Magic, and he was, I was like, is it okay with you if I make a make videos on these? I, and I had seen people, other people do them, but you know, I just wanted to make sure with him, since these stories have just... Um, I just love them and just took a place in my heart almost instantly after playing them. Um, and he's like, yeah, sure, I'm just glad people still care about the game. So, I encourage you all, I'm going to put these links uh, for the words, the graphics, and the music in the description. Uh, as well as one to Jay's games. And finally, uh, to that... Uh, homepage, but that my of uh, Jonas, but that might actually be the link it's showing there. Well, uh, what I highly recommend you play this game, especially with music. It's just so atmospherically perfect and just a really a gem of game to play. Uh, but whatever your opinion, I want to hear it. So leave a like, leave a comment, or leave this video somewhere for someone else to find and do those things. Uh, thanks again for watching. Craylin out.